Back in the early 80s, I quite fancied getting hold of an Acorn system computer. Um, I got as far as uh, buying the rack, um, but you know what it's like, uh, you get distracted and before you know it, 40 odd years have passed. I bought this rack back in 1980 when I was 22 years old. Now it doesn't take a mathematician to work out that if I'm going to finish this thing, I'd better get on with it. So I did, and here it is, my genuine, non-original, 40 year old Acorn system computer which I built last year. The Acorn system range of computers were a modular Eurocard arrangement that could be built by the average hobbyist and by all accounts were the standard workhorse for development in Acorn's own lab. Not that I'm suggesting Acorn were hobbyists, obviously. Like many, I couldn't afford to buy an original one, not that I can find one for sale anyway, but it's pretty obvious that the only way I was going to get an Acorn system computer was to take my rack buy all the missing bits and build one myself like I should have done 40 odd years ago. But before I go any further, I need to thank, particularly thank Trevor Hamlet and Chris Oddy um, for providing all of the circuit boards and the information required to build one of these things 40 odd years after they were launched. And just in case you fancy having a go yourself, I'll leave a link or two in the description. As an approach, I decided to uh, collect all the bits and box them up um, so it kind of gave me the, uh, the feel of an original kit. I figured this would be the best way to get the same experience as I would have had back in the day. And I also get to experience the unboxing. Now those that have been following the channel will probably know what's coming next, but for those that haven't, here's the unboxing video. Before we get carried away with the nitty gritty, let's just have a look at these things as they were back in the day. Um, this is an advert for a System 1. Um, I don't actually have one of these. Oh, well, actually I do. Uh, Pete, uh, Retro Pete over at Short Circuit, he's got it. Um, but there's quite a few bits missing from it. There were basically two boards bolted together. Um, this is the CPU board, and this one, if it was complete, would have a keyboard and a display. And it also has a cassette interface for storing and saving programs and so on. This one's only got the cassette interface, but I'll explain why that is later. Now, if you were the proud owner of a System 1, you may have been tempted to upgrade it to a System 2. Uh, this involves splitting the rack, um, putting some edge connectors on, popping the, uh, uh, the processor board in, a uh, cassette board. Then you'd need to build a video card and a memory card. And you've got yourself a System 2. So during this process, you would remove a System 1 PROM, uh, like the operating system if you like, and pop in a System 2 version um, onto the process board. In this scenario, the uh, cassette board that would have had the display and the keyboard, uh, as well as the cassette bit, is only used as a cassette, which is why mine only has the cassette components. So with all this stuff in place, all that's needed is a power supply and a keyboard. Now, in my case, uh, the keyboard um, has been made out of an old BBC micro keyboard. And it kind of goes in there. Now, if you're worried that there's now a BBC Micro uh, out there with a missing keyboard, no, no, don't need to worry. Um, a short wheelbarrow Land Rover ran over the BBC Micro and the only thing that was left was the keyboard. So, all good. So this keyboard is designed to fit into an Acorn Atom case. Um, now, the Acorn Atom is based on the Acorn system uh, range <clears throat> and it's basically an Acorn subset of an Acorn system squeezed into the keyboard case that would have come with an Acorn system at the time. Um, so the keyboard cases are very, very similar. Um, there's a flaw here, of course, uh, that the atoms are quite sought after. So if you know anybody who's uh, had one that's perhaps been run over by a Land Rover or something and the case is okay, let me know. Now these boards um, are designed to go into an electron case. Um, doesn't feel quite right because I imagine as soon as I do this and publish the video somebody will turn up with an electron that's got a missing case. Um, but it's an option. Uh, another option is for me to use this Hammond case which um, Dave uh, aka Devilish Design very kindly gave me. Um, but I have plans to use this for my NASCOM. Um, so maybe it'll just have to stay as it is for now. Um, I mean I quite like the naked look. <clears throat> So to finish the thing off and uh, hide all the dodgy soldering, I decided it was time to make some front panels. I mean, how hard could it be? I simply took some spare metal, 
cut it to size and drilled a few holes. Easy. So then I took my new panels, threw them all in the bin, bought these nice new ones from Veritech. And here they are, uh, all fitted, drilled and fitted, and, and you can't see any solder joints at all now, um, which is great. Now these things can be a bit of a pain to drill, or at least to get right. Um, you have to be very accurate. So when I noticed this whole drilling service on eBay, I thought, well, I'll give it a go. Now I know what you're thinking, and I was sceptical at first, but if you line them up really carefully, and just take your time in measuring them, they work quite well. I'll leave a link in the description. Now, if you are the proud owner of a System 2, um, you may well be tempted to upgrade it to a System 3. I was, so I did. So System 3 is like a System 2, but with a floppy disk interface instead of a cassette interface. The Acorn cassette operating system is then replaced with the Acorn disk operating system. Now, I've cheated a bit here. I've mounted my disk drive between two Euro cards which slide in and out on the card rails, on the card guides rather. Um, now I might actually follow the example of Chris Oddy and make myself a module uh, similar to the Acorn one that you used to be able to get at the time. Although to be honest, looking at the mess I made of the front panels, maybe I'll just leave it as it is. Now there was also a System 4 and a System 5. Um, as far as I know, I don't think they were available as kits. I think you bought those ready built. Um, the System 4 was basically like a System 3 in a slightly bigger case. Uh, well, it's double height, if I remember correctly, uh, and had more disk drive storage. Um, and, and the System 5 was uh, different again, in that it had um, a, a 6502A processor uh, running at 2 meg, so running faster. Um, and typically, although not always, but typically was, was uh, sold with the 80 column card, whereas this one's got the 40 column card. Sometime uh, around 1982, Acorn passed all of their uh, Eurocard systems to a company called uh, Control Universal. Now, prior to that, Control Universal had been making memory boards for uh, the Acorn series. Um, and in fact, here is a genuine, non-original, 44-year-old memory board from Control Universal that I built last year. And there's a board to build another one. Now I mentioned earlier that the original Acorn system computers are almost impossible to get hold of. Which to be honest is a bit of a sore point with me as I think quite a few of these things are probably sat in museum storerooms not doing anything. Which is a bit of a shame really. I suppose that's fair enough if the systems are historically significant. But I bet there are a fair few uh, duplicate system 3s and 2s and so on in museum storerooms that will never see the light of day. Obviously donating to a museum is a great thing to do, especially if, if what you've got is historically significant or, or quite unique. Um, but it's a double-edged sword. Um, I can't help thinking for some of these systems, especially the ones that are duplicates, it's a bit of a dead end. It's a kind of graveyard. Which seems a bit sad really. Now if the aim is simply to keep your collection together, um, well you could always just bury it in the garden and save the museum some storage costs. But surely it would be better to split your collection up and sell it or gift it to the next generation of enthusiasts. That way your treasure collection will be experienced and enjoyed by many others um, and then possibly gifted or sold on to a further generation of enthusiasts. Don't forget these things will outlast us. I mean I'm not quite sure why they should have to go to their grave just because you've gone to yours. Thankfully these things are quite easy to build thanks to Chris and Trevor. Um, and you get a nice sense of satisfaction every time you build a card or complete a card. And in fact, um, once I've started, I find it quite hard to stop. Um, I've kind of got these things coming out of my ears now. Oh. It was only when I ran out of solder that I came to the senses. Of course, the only downside to adding all these cards is you have to drill more of these front panels. It was around this time that, for some unknown reason, I bought a Dragon 64. Um, 
And it was at that point that I realised who my true friends were because people started rallying around thinking I'd had some kind of mental breakdown. Now the Dragon 64 introduced me to two things. Firstly, an unlikely bunch of characters who told me I was on the road to enlightenment. Uh, the second thing was the uh, 6809 microprocessor. I was so taken with the 6809 that I decided I was going to bin the 6502 and fit the 6809 instead. Now it seemed a fairly reasonable thing to do because Acorn did in fact supply a 6809 Euro card as a direct replacement for the 6502. Now obviously original ones are all in boxes in museums or buried in gardens, but I was quite fortunate. A few years ago Trevor Hamlet had made a few of these things um, and he kind of let me have one. Getting hold of a 6809 gave me an idea. Using a 6809 meant that I now had a spare 6502. I'd already moved the cassette interface to make my System 2 into a System 3 and during the, my exuberance during the build I had more memory cards than I had address space for and I had some more solder. So all I needed was a new VDU card and I have enough bits to build another System 2. But remembering that proud owners of System 2s uh, would have been tempted to make them into System 3s, I built another floppy disk controller and created a second System 3 instead. And here it is. Um, now I've obviously not finished yet, I still have to make another keyboard and I do have this uh, Gemini replica keyboard so this should do the trick. So in the spirit of not knowing when to stop, um, I built two Echonet boards so I can try and connect these things together um, and remembering what fun I had at the last synthesized event in Cambridge I thought I might build a MIDI interface onto this and try to do something similar to what we did with the NASCOM at that event. Now at the start of this video I described these machines as being genuine and it's probably worth just spending a couple of minutes talking about that because I know people will have a view on that. Now I'm sure many people will um, think of these as replicas uh, Acorn System 3 replica. I don't have a problem with that, not at all, but um, I'm not sure things are that simple. In my garage receiving some TLC I have a genuine 1966 BSA Victor Special. But it's had so many repairs, upgrades and replacement parts over the years that the only thing that left that is truly original is some of the engine, bits of the frame uh, and bits of the front forks. But because it has all the correct replacement bits on it, it's considered to be an original bike. Now if we take this a stage further, now this chain guard bracket was made in 1966 by BSA and was fitted to my 1966 bike sometime before I bought it. But it's wrong for the bike. My bike should have a bit that looks like this. If I put this piece on my bike, this 1966 BSA piece, my bike's no longer original. But if I fit this piece that I made, this replica piece that I made last year, then it becomes original again. Let's look at it from another angle. Trigger's 20 year old well maintained broom had 17 new heads and 14 new handles. So maybe it's not original. But it's a genuine broom and you wouldn't call it a replica. So whilst I accept that my Acorn design machines built with genuine hardware, original software and a mix of new and period components and some replica parts probably aren't original, I'm not convinced they're replicas either. If we accept that Trigger's well maintained broom is still a broom uh, then maybe my non-original Acorn System 3 is still an Acorn System 3. It just happens to be less than a year old. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. So given that we have a couple of non-original, non-replica, genuine 43-year-old Acorn System 3s, what can we do with them? Now, one thing I did like the look of was the Acorn Prestel terminal. Uh, it was basically a 6502 System 3, which included a versatile interface board, and an internally fitted GC modem and some line isolation gubbins on the outside. The only problem was the software was nowhere to be found. On the positive side, it gave me an excuse to build a versatile interface board. So with the original software nowhere to be found, I decided to write my own. And with me now being an enlightened 6809 coder, I decided to write it in 6809 assembler. Uh, and I'm really pleased at how it works. Uh, here it is connected to Telstar at Retrofest 23 in Cambridge. And now that it's a 6809 system, I was able to take it along with my Dragon 64 to meet my new enlightened friends at the Dragon Meet at the Cambridge Museum of Technology. I'm glad I didn't write it in 6502 because just after I'd finished, uh, Andrew Gordon turned up and told me that he had the source code for the 6502 version uh, from a time when he was working at Acorn. 
So I made the journey across to his house and he very kindly lent me that disc along with others um, so that I could bring them back and run them through a grease weasel. And whilst a few tricks were needed to, to read the disc, uh, we managed to get it all off intact and now it's preserved forevermore. Here it is running in MAME. So in terms of these machines, I still have a few things to do. Um, I've got front panels to, to get hold of and drill and so on. Um, and then I've got this, um, this genuine non-original uh, Control Universal memory card to sort out. Although to be honest, I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put it. I've kind of got um, more memory than I've got address space for. Um, and then I had another idea. <clears throat> so I decided what I needed was another machine, a System 2, something that could house the unused cassette interface and the extra memory cards that I seem to have. I'll try and cover software and stuff like that in a future video, um, but for now I've kind of started porting DOS over to the 6809. Now I know there's a version of Flex out there somewhere, uh, I don't know where it is, um, we can't seem to find it, so if, you, if you've got it, I know where it is, let me know. Um, but to be honest, I kind of wanted to carry on with the 6809 journey and porting the Acorn DOS to it might be a way to do that. On top of that, hopefully I'll find time to uh, write some code to get the Echonet interface working on the 6809 machine. Uh, and I still have the MIDI interface to think about. It's all go around here, I can tell you. In fact, it won't be long before I need a bigger rack uh, and some more solder. Well, that's probably enough for now. Um, I'll try and cover software and the Echonet and all that kind of stuff in future videos. Um, don't forget, if you've got a spare Atom or a System 3 in your loft that I can have, let me know. Um, other than that, um, don't forget to like, subscribe and so on. Uh, maybe I'll see you next time.